Hey, it's Merritt from SMB Futures. Today we're going to dive into a key lesson from a student of mine, and we're also going to take a look at crude oil. So we'll start with crude oil. I have here on the profile chart the exact same hypos from yesterday uh, because today I had kind of a all hands on deck administrative duties and all kinds of things to take care of so I was not able to trade the morning session unfortunately so still have the hypos from yesterday here um, as those would have been key levels that we paid attention to coming into today as well um, we would have split yesterday's profile into its two main distributions to keep an eye on how that progressed and as this market opened up a uh, beautiful spot to get long before the open order flow going positive. We settle into an uptrend with order flow still sustaining uh, right after the pit session open. Beautiful spot to get on that first pullback there. Uh, as you can see here, we had mentioned yesterday 55.12 being that kind of easy target to get to. We didn't quite get there yesterday, but we certainly made that a point to, to do that today. And then we went sideways from there. Very interesting case study today in terms of order flow. Once we kind of achieve that destination, you then begin to see the, the buyers absolutely drying up. And then you see the sellers really, really start to press. And I'll admit, initially in the room, we thought that the sellers were getting absorbed and we might see a little pop higher, a little squeeze there of those trapped aggressive sellers. That wasn't the case. Ultimately, the passive buyer um, stepped aside and the aggressiveness persisted, which led to a really nice reversion across these distributions from the prior day and all the way back down to that kind of key line in the sand uh, into that low of day. Put in a poor low right there. We'll expect that to be taken out either in the overnight session or uh, pretty quickly tomorrow. So, that's kind of a, a quick and dirty of, of what happened today. I mean, it was, I think, a very clear narrative for my students around the overnight levels holding in particular here, leading to pretty much without any confusion, you had to be bullish this market if you're a student of mine uh, and you're applying the methodology and the, the market framework that we apply. So bullish based on what we saw yesterday and into the overnight session, either you get involved here or you get involved on a couple pullbacks before the order flow absolutely starts to, to shift on you. Not to mention 5512 area was a potential destination. And so kind of target achieved, order flow shifts, rinse and repeat. So now into the lesson. I had a student that got involved with this uptrend. In fact, they did a pretty nice job of, of getting involved with that uptrend. Um, the problem, however, is in their review and taking a look at their actions. So they got involved around 54.90 right here. We'll give them a little arrow. So they took a long trade, again, going with pullbacks, just like I suggested, just like they should have been doing. So there was no real confusion around the entry, why they were getting in, the context um, you know, uh, of, of the, the idea that this market should be heading towards the 55 teens, if you will. Uh, so they're all over that. But their executions looked like so. They got in, let's be a little more precise with this. Let's call it right there. And they actually scratched out of the trade right here. So we can zoom in on this a bit, make it easier to see. There we are. So they got involved as soon as the, uh, the buyer started to step in. And then sellers started to press a little bit and they got out, scratched the trade. Now, the student with their text um, didn't really give any kind of review as to why that decision was made, uh, what they saw, whether or not that was a good or bad decision according to their process, these type things. And this is where I think too many people gloss over a session, 
gloss over a particular execution, a particular decision, whether that's getting into a trade, taking partial profits, scratching out, um, scaling out partially, uh, flattening out into you know an area, whatever that trading decision is, even just moving a stop, whether or not it gets hit or not, they need to be reviewed and they need to be judged according to some form of a methodology, some form of a process-driven way of making whatever that decision was. Very, very important. So how might this review looked like uh, from an ideal perspective? Well, okay, at 9.49, I scratched out of the long, and let's pretend they had already written up something on their long and why they were in and the name of the setup, which playbook they were referring to, blah, blah, blah. At 9.49, I scratched out of this trade. The question needs to be, I suppose, from kind of a top-down perspective, first and foremost, was this a decision made based on market-generated information? MGI is the acronym we use. Was this market-generated information that caused you to make that decision? That's first and foremost. Preferably, the answer that we want here is a yes. You want to have made a particular decision based on something tangible that one of your key variables that is a part of your process for making scratch out decisions was telling you, hey, it's a good idea to scratch. That is the best case scenario. And then you tip your hat and you move on because the market was telling you based on your variables, which are a part of your process for scratching out of a trade, we're telling you to do so. Hey, that's great. You did your job. You executed well. We can move on. If the answer is no to was it market-generated information that got me to, to scratch out of this position, well, that's a whole different can of worms, right? Now it's typically something that was impulsive, something that was emotional, something that was driven by fear, perhaps, something that was driven by hindsight, perhaps, such as the last three times you tried this trade, it didn't work, so you were really, really gun-shy and you didn't give it the proper chance. Again, what would a proper chance be? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that would be a process-driven way of, a, of managing that particular playbook trade. That's what a proper chance or a fair chance would be. If you somehow insert emotion or you know impulsive behavior or fear or greed or whatever the case may be in between process, that's where we have problems. That's where we make errors. And we don't need to just say scratch out of a trade here and then move on with our review work. We need to address whether or not it was driven by market-generated information, whether that was a part of our process or not, and do our, our real type quality review there. If it wasn't, we need to address what was the emotion there? What was the bias there? What was the, the error that was made? Is it something that you're commonly doing day to day in your reviews? Are you identifying a pattern of you know, allowing um, you know, just a, a small blip in price action or order flow to shake you out of quality playbook trades? Well, that needs to be addressed, and you need to be journaling in real time while you're trading. So ideally, the trader, even if this was, let's call it an emotional, fear-driven mistake, an error to, to scratch out of the trade, ideally, the trader is journaling in real time as they make trading decisions throughout the day, and then as a part of the review process, they look back at their journal from that day, and they say, Okay, let's review what happened around 9.49. Ah, I see that I focused on some chart that's normally not a part of my normal analysis and it didn't look good, so I made a decision to, to, to exit. So now we have tangible, concrete, something that we did in that moment that we can understand about ourselves and improve for tomorrow. 
we could set a process goal for tomorrow that says something like, before any trade decision I make, I will confirm that I'm using the proper variables for my process to make that decision. Not just deciding to pull up a 240 minute chart and put a 200 moving average on it and say, oh, you know what? We just went below that. I better scratch this trade. Do you normally rely on such information? No. Well, then what the heck are you doing? You're, you're inserting randomness into your overall expectancy. Anyways, the, the main point here is gauge the quality of every decision you make every session you trade. And I can promise you, you're going to be a better trader for doing that. You're going to allow yourself to be more objective and open and honest with yourself about where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, and it's going to make you better. We'll see y'all next time.